Okay, good evening. Uh, first, uh, greetings from Gdańsk. Second, thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to participate in this conference. And third, the topic of my speech is resilience and religious identity in the message of Judges, Book of Judges 6, 11 to 24. Uh, the program of the speech is, as uh, you can see here, introduction point first, the crisis situation of Israelites' difficulties and then the questioning and foundations and the fruit of resilience. And at the end, concluding remarks. First, introduction. In the sixth chapter of the Book of Judges, uh, an episode of the appearance of the messenger of the messenger of God Yahweh to Gideon, an Israelite of the tribe of Manasseh, is described. According to the biblical text, the incident took place when the Israelites found themselves under oppression and in great a poverty into which they were brought by the Midianites. This difficult situation prompted the Israelites to cry out, out to God for help. In Judge, in the book of Judges 6, uh, verse 6, we, we, read, uh, we read, Midian brought Israel to great distress, and the Israelites cried to Yahweh. The messenger of Yahweh greeted Gideon with the words, Yahweh is with you, you mighty warrior. This greeting in turn provoked Gideon's meaningful question. If Yahweh is with us, why then has all this happened to us? This and further questions of Gideon reveal impatience and difficulty uh, in enduring that distressing situation. Uh, they can be seen also as a reflection of problems with resilience. Gideon's dialogue with the messenger of, God, of Yahweh and the, description, and the description of the event reveal two things. First, elements that contributed to Gideon's resilience problems and perhaps resilience problems of the Israelites too. Second, the story reveals specific advice and instructions on the religious foundations of resilience. In this short speech, based on the exegetical interpretation of the text from the book of Judges, I will try to show the foundations of resilience as a response to crisis that allows and enables one to move on despite the need and suffering and even grow from it. Point first, the crisis situation of the Israelites. Judge 6 begins by mentioning the terrible crisis the Israelites find themselves. The reason was the oppression from the Midianites. The book of Numbers reports that the Midianites, together with Moab, opposed the Israelites on their way to Canaan, to the promised land, and led them astray with idolatry and sexual immorality. So the conflict between the Israelites and Midianites in Gideon's day was nothing new. This time, however, the Israelites felt the severity of it very strongly. The Midianites came up against Israel. It is, oh yeah, it is the slide, okay. The Midianites came against, up against Israel. They came in as a multitude of locusts and destroyed Israelites' crops. They left Israel nothing to live on, not a sheep, or an ox or a donkey. They came into the land of Israel to destroy it. The Israelites feared the Midianites, which is 
why they made themselves dense in the mountains and the caves and the strongholds. Therefore, as the biblical narrator mentions, Gideon was threshing wheat not in an exposed place, but in the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. Midian really brought Israel to great distress, so the Israelites cried to Yahweh. Yahweh responded first by sending his prophet to the Israelites. He pointed out the cause of Israel's distress. It was the refuse to obey the voice of Yahweh. The second form of Yahweh's response to the Israelites' cry was to send a messenger to Gideon to call him to undertake the task of delivering the Israelites from the hand of the Midianites. This scene of the meeting and the dialogue between the messenger of Yahweh and Gideon is now the subject of our reflection. And second point, difficulties with the resilience of Gideon. Gideon's reaction to the messenger of Yahweh was very emotional. His utterances reveal his great fatigue with the current problems, disappointment, impatience, helplessness, and in general problems with resilience in the face of the tragic situation in which he and all the people of Israel found themselves. Where were the inner foundations of Gideon's emotional statements and the reasons for, the, for his difficulty with resilience? First, questioning the presence of Yahweh. The messenger greeted Gideon with the words, Yahweh is with you. Just a moment, okay, this is the, the text. Uh, the messenger greeted Gideon with the words, Yahweh is with you, you mighty man of valor. In his reply, Gideon questioned the truth, truthful, truthfulness of the first part of the greeting. He expressed it by asking, if Yahweh is with us, why then has all this happened to us? Gideon knew the father's story of Yahweh. He had heard of the miracles, wonders that Yahweh had done when he led Israel out of Egypt. At the time the messenger of Yahweh came to Gideon, Gideon believed that Yahweh was not with his people because he was not showing his uh, protective power. Hence Gideon said, but now Yahweh has abandoned us and put us into the hand of Midian. Gideon knew the story of the Exodus and of Moses, and undoubtedly he also knew what the name of Yahweh meant, namely the one who always is. In response to the messenger's greeting, Gideon therefore questioned the essence of the nature of the God of Israel, namely that he is, as one who does something for the good of his people. For Gideon, found, uh, for Gideon found that such a Yahweh was not present at that time. Gideon's difficulties in recognizing the presence of Yahweh must have been related to Gideon's immaturity in the Yahvist faith. Probably together with his people, as Yahweh said through the prophet Saint Ariel, Gideon worshipped the gods of Amorites and did not listen to the voice of Yahweh. After accepting God's call to be Israel's savior, which took place during the meeting with the messenger, Gideon destroyed the altar of Baal, cut down the Asherah and built an altar for Yahweh. It is Judge 6, 25-26. And when the Israelites wanted to take him their king, he replied, I will not rule over you, Yahweh shall rule over you. It is Judges 8, 23. Later, however, 
he made effort out of the golden earrings of the beaten Ishmaelites and led the Israelites to idolatry. For this effort there made of pagan material was the object of an illegal cult or at least a manifestation of a syncretism of Yahvism and idolatrous practices. So we may assume that Gideon at the time of appearance of the messenger of Yahweh was not yet a monotheistic Yahvist. At that time Gideon did not fully understand what the prophet's word Yahweh your God, your God meant. He was not fully aware of the mutual obligations resulting from the covenant, including the fact that there was no place for another God in this relationship. Gideon had difficulty recognizing the presence of Yahweh and therefore needed a sign of assurance that would demonstrate that it was Yahweh who was speaking to him. When he saw the sign, he then said, my Lord Yahweh. Gideon's reaction to the sign was very emotional again. It was expressed in the words about the fear of death as a result of seeing Yahweh's messenger. Ultimately, these emotions and fear were quenched by Yahweh's declaration of peace, shalom, and his promise that Gideon will not die. It is 6.22.24. Gideon likely grasped that Yahweh was indeed with him, also if the circumstances may have suggested otherwise. And second, questioning the leading of Yahweh. In response to the greeting of the messenger of Yahweh, Gideon put into question not only the presence of Yahweh, he also denied that Yahweh, who had miraculously brought Israel out of Egypt, was still leading his nation. Therefore, he asked, where are all these wonders? Uh, we see here also in the, on the screen, the text in the middle. Where are all these wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, did not Yahweh bring us up out of Egypt? This question undermined the truth of the ancestor's account of, ble of the blessings Yahweh had shown Israel in its history. It also reveals little awareness of all the recent mighty acts of God on behalf of Israel. The plight of Gideon and his nation undermined his faith in God's protection and leading in the past. In Gideon's logic, if Yahweh did not defend the Israelites from the Midianites in Gideon's day, he probably did not do so before and was not leading Israel as his ancestors had told Gideon. The extremely difficult situation in which Gideon and his people found themselves also provoked the questioning of Yahweh's leadership. The emotional questioning of the leadership of the leadership of Yahweh also made resilience difficult. And third, questioning the ability to take up God's call. From the dialogue of Gideon with the messenger of Yahweh, we may conclude as well that Gideon's emotional statements betraying his be disbelief in the presence of Yahweh and uh, the leadership of Yahweh were also accompanied by Gideon's sense of inability to take up God's call to save Israel from the power of Midian. Uh, next text. No. Okay, it's the call. According uh, to our text, after Gideon's objections to the accompanying and supporting presence of God Yahweh, Yahweh himself turned to him and said, Go in this your strength and save Israel from the hand of Midian. 
have not I sent you? Gideon excused himself from the assign assignment and said, With which shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is the poorest in Manasseh, and I am the, the least in my father's house. Uh, Gideon had low self-esteem at the, at the time. He did not believe in his strength and was unaware of the power he had received from Yahweh. Therefore, he paid no attention to the words of Yahweh, have not I sent you? This was certainly a consequence of the aforementioned difficulties in believing in Yahweh and could also be associated with Gideon's uh, succumbing to the worship of Baal. The sign asked for, uh, the sign uh, asked for, which uh, dispelled doubts about the presence of Yahweh and the gift of uh, peace from Yahweh, gave Gideon the basis for undertaking the mission of the savior of the Israeli people. Ultimately, Gideon, with a strong conviction of the accompanying and supportive presence of Yahweh, saved Israel out of the hand of Midian. And the, the third main point of, of the speech, the foundations of the and the fruit of resilience. The story of Judge 6, 11 to 24 about the appearance of Yahweh's messenger to Gideon shows the Israeli hero as one who found it difficult to survive the tribulation brought upon his people by the Midianites and undertake the mission assigned to him by God Yahweh in this situation. God, through his messenger, responded to Gideon's objections and doubts, also fulfilling the request for a sign authenticating uh, the divine authority of the messenger. In the analyzed text, we are able to see the foundations of resilience in a crisis situation. First, the biblical text in question instructs that the important basis for resilience is a strong faith in God's accompanying and supportive presence both in the past and present. This faith, in turn, is the basis for faith in God's guidance, which includes acts of deliverance from various tribulations, both in history and in the present. In this trust in God's good guidance or leadership, we can see the second foundation of resilience. And the third foundation, we may consider, as the third foundation, we may consider the awareness of the mission entrusted by God and faith in the ability to undertake it. And concluding uh, remarks. Historical critical studies of the stories about Gideon in the book of Judges suggest that the text of Judge 6, 11, 24 should be seen as the fruit of a red, of reductional work uh, done uh, primarily in the late Deuteronomistic and post-Deuteronomistic currents. Thus, chronologically and situatively, it would be uh, the late exilic and post-exilic period, 6th-5th BC. In the history of Israel, at that time, the members of the Jewish nation did not lack difficulties both in the Babylonian exile and on their return to their homeland when the Judeans undertook a national religious uh, renew renewal. In both cases, the key issue was Judean identity. Resilience was needed to preserve and uh, nurture this identity of God's people in circumstances full of problems and doubts. It was helped by faith in the accompanying and supporting presence of God, 
in his good guidance, even though there were difficulties all the time, as well as the awareness of God's calling to remain in a covenant with God, to cultivate national and religious traditions, to pass the faith to the next generations, and to live in peace, shalom, in the land that God, Yahweh, has given. Such a message read in Judge 6, 11, 24 can be considered valid for a religious man at all times. Thank you very much for your attention.